Hey, how are you? Jason Stapleton here, and I want to take a minute and talk with you about why authority is so important to what you do. And if you are a coach or a consultant, this should be of particular interest to you because if you haven't noticed, the market over the last 18 months or so has shifted quite significantly. And uh, <clears throat> what I mean by that is not that you know it's getting harder to open rates are going down and the cost of advertising is going up. That's been happening for years. But over the last 18 months, we have really seen, you have likely seen, <clears throat> a shift to a state of apathy in the market that we haven't seen before, especially online. And it's my belief that there's, because we're moving out of an age of, uh, of scarcity where people had to show up, there was appointment viewing, there was a time and a date when you had to schedule, to uh, uh, you know, a world of abundance where we can literally get anything all the time. Apathy has really become the new default state for us uh, when we see things, advertisements and stuff on the internet. And so um, that becomes a problem. And we've added to that increasingly the ease with which one can start an online business. So it is becoming cheaper and easier to do what it is we do. And that, of course, is flooding the market with more noise. And it's you trying to rise above that noise and, and motivate your apathetic audience to listen to what it is that you're talking about is becoming more and more difficult. And it's a battle that I would imagine that you're losing. But don't worry, because what I want to talk with you about today is how we build that authority, okay? How do we rise above the noise? And um, for this demonstration, um, we could use virtually any industry that we wanted to. We could talk about uh, real estate, we could talk accounting, uh, business consulting, or marketing coaching. It really doesn't matter. But there are a few things that we have to have if we're gonna run a successful business in you know, 2019, okay? Now the first one that we need is we need a large number of people. Okay, we need a large number of people. Now, th this is not as big a deal as it used to be because it used to be uh, trying to go find a large enough pool of people in your local area became really difficult. But the advent of the internet and the way we can target people on Facebook now makes this uh, less important. But if you have chosen to niche all the way down to something like, I don't know, French Polynesian underwater basket weavers or something like that, you may find it more difficult and you may have to expand a bit. But this is definitely something that has an obstacle that has largely gone away for us. The second thing that you need, you need a large number of people who have money. Okay. This again, is somewhat subjective in the sense that even if you're, say, you're running a pawn shop, well, the money that you're getting as a pawn shop owner really comes in the form of products that people are bringing to you to sell or to turn over in exchange for cash. So you are looking for people who don't have any money but who have stuff, and that stuff is really the cash versus, say, a luxury car dealer who's looking for people who have a lot of money or who have a lot of credit and who are willing to lay it down for a luxury car. So. They don't need to have massive amounts of money, but they do need to have some money, at least enough to overcome the hurdle of whatever it is you're going to charge for your product or service. And then finally, this is the most important one, and this is the one people overlook the most, especially those of you in that coaching and consulting niche. They need to be, and I'm going to misspell it because I'm the product of a public education, but they need to be fanatical about what it is that you do or the, uh, or the thing that you are offering. So one of the best examples that I can think of of a product or an industry that meets this niche is golfers. Okay, Golfers, massive number of people who golf. They got lots of money because it costs a fortune just to get on the golf course, not to mention all the stuff that you've got to buy to be a golfer. And number three, they are absolutely fanatical. If you talk to these golfers who spend a lot of time out there, who spend money on golf, they spend all their money on golf. It's, it's a, it is a, they will spend $18 on a golf ball they will lose in five minutes because the golf ball manufacturer promised them that it will extend their drive by 10 yards. That's how fanatical they are about it. And so when you're, if you're not at a place yet where you've picked a niche, and hopefully you are, but looking for these three things is critically important. And if you have, if you have, if you have a miss, if you have, if you've missed, and you've gone too narrow and you've got too tight of a segment or you haven't attacked the portion of the industry where the fanaticism is, then you need to probably look at modifying that before we look into authority building. 
Now, once we have those three things, we're really talking about how do we rise above? Now, I want to demonstrate why this is so important. And I got some notes here. I'm going to be using uh, financial planning as, as an example, mainly because the numbers are easy to find and it is something that I know a little bit about because I, I both worked in that industry and I've also consulted in that industry. So um, we're going to use this as an example. But in America, just in America, there are roughly 200,000 920 financial planners at any given time. And that number doesn't change much year over year. Um, 200,000 people, all vying for the same amount of money. Now, how much money are we talking about? We're talking about a truckload of money. In fact, total investable assets in the US, $29 trillion. Now, that's everything. Every penny that Americans have invested in pension funds and 401ks and, and, and you know, prop shops and everything, Stuff they're managing on their own, $29 trillion. It's a big number. Let's carve out a chunk of that. If we're a financial planner, who are we really marketing to? Well, we're marketing to people with 401ks and IRAs. And it turns out that the IRA, okay, just IRAs, account for the largest chunk at about $7.6 trillion. So we have, in America, 200,000 people chasing $7.6 trillion in assets. And every one of them looks the same because the government has put a lot of regulation on this industry that says, here's what you can sell, here's how you can sell it, here's what's available, and every single company has their own version of exactly the same thing. So 200,000 people chasing $7.6 trillion in assets, every one of them looks the same. If you are in this industry, you know exactly what I'm talking about. How do you rise above? Well, prior to the age of the internet and prior to really the last 10 years or so, because the last well, five years, let's say, because things have really changed a lot in the last five years. Um, prior to that time, the way you did it was by building personal relationship. So you shook hands, you showed up at events, you handed out your business card, you, you sat down, you got a meeting with somebody and sat down with them and you explained the value of what it is that you do and you tried to get their money. The most difficult thing was trying to move somebody who already had a financial planner over to you because of the relationship that had been previously built. But that was how you built a business. And then you, know, they, you, then you nurtured and cared for those people and you continued to get referral business and the business grew. But that was the way you differentiated yourself. It wasn't through product, it was through personal relationship, trust and likability. It was through authority locally. But now, with the advent of the interwebs and what we can do now on Facebook with targeted markets and some of the new technology we have, you're no longer confined to just your local area. See, you can now, my accountant, for example, doesn't live in California. Neither does my real estate agent. Neither does uh, my investment advisor. None of those people live in the same state that I live in. I work with them, I stay with them because they are the very best people and I've worked with them for years and it doesn't matter where they are. With Skype and Zoom and all of the other face-to-face -face instant video communication, you can have a sit-down meeting with somebody anywhere in the world 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But you see, if you are getting your fair share of $7.6 trillion, if you're one of the 200,000 financial planners in America, that's about 37 million. Okay? That means technically, if you are making less than if you have less than $37 million under management as a financial planner, you're not getting even your fair share, what your what would be you know, your chunk of the investable assets in America. And the question is why? And the answer is pretty simple. It's because you haven't taken the time to nurture and develop authority and celebrity in a way that's going to attract people to you in the 21st century. You're working in analog rather than digital. And like I said, the way we build that today online is not complicated. It doesn't, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be some sort of showman. You don't have to show up and, and uh, you know, uh, and, and, and like some used car salesman online trying to convince people to come over and fill out your form. All you got to do is be yourself. Literally, that's all you have to do is be yourself. Get online and demonstrate that you can actually help people. Now what I'm doing right here is just showing you the importance of why authority matters today. 
because there are 200,000 people now in America in this industry alone who are all online, who are all trying to get more business, who are all using a variety of techniques, some of which are outdated and, and unnecessary and a waste of time, who are all trying to get that same chunk of money. And your industry is exactly the same. And this is what I want to do. So now you understand, hopefully you understand the value of this if you didn't before. Here's what I'd like to do. I would like to teach you it's about a 20, 30 minute training on how you build authority step by step in the 21st century online. Okay. All you gotta do is click the messenger button underneath this video and I'll just send you the video. I'm not asking for your email address or anything like that. Just click on the messenger link and I'll send it to you because I want you to see how this works in real time and the steps that you need to take in order to build more authority online. And like I said, I'm going to do it step by step. This isn't one of those things. I'm actually going to teach you how to do this rather than just elude to how it's done, which is what most people will do. Again, that's one of the, what's, that's one of the mistakes that you are likely making is you're worried about giving away too much. I'm going to give away the farm. I'm going to show you how you build authority online in the video. So click on the link underneath this says message me and I'll, you know, message me on Facebook and I'll send this over to you. And I uh, appreciate you listening. Thanks so much.